What is Avery Knapp? What is Avery Knapp? <laughs> well, it's a band that uh, well, my best friend and I started, uh, Pai Zambowski and I. Uh, we started uh, decades ago. We wanted to take on the world, uh, not just some little bar. We've already done all that stuff. We've played in front of thousands of people. We've recorded thousands of hours of music. We always believed that it would be big. We wanted to be the Beatles. We wanted to be Alice Cooper, uh, Aerosmith, Kiss, all of them, Zeppelin. That's what we wanted to be. That was always what we wanted to be, and it still do. It's not over yet. So, what is Avery Knapp? Avery Knapp is in the past. The Fortress Experiment gives people a chance to be all they can be, and Dan Strudwick got his chance by meeting our experiment controls, as I knew him personally. And in fact, he was the host of the original Fortress TV show. Dan was a musician in a band called Avery Knapp that looked like it was getting some real success until bad luck happened and the band disbanded. So this would be Dan's second chance to make music, and let's see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Avery Knapp. What does it take to make a professional record album? Well, we're about to find out. But in general, a high quality record album will encompass the following seven steps. Step one is a drum track, which basically sets the bass line for the recording. Step two is a bass guitar that basically bridges the gap between the drum tracks and the guitars. Step three are the guitar solos. Step four are the vocals. Step five is the percussion. Step six is a mix down where we take all the previously recorded tracks and make them into a song. And finally, step seven is the mastering and production of the audio CD. All recording was done at the world famous Metalworks Recording Studios here in Toronto. We're here in Toronto to talk to Dan Strudwick, lead singer of the rock group Avery Knapp about the band's latest album called Days of My Life, currently in production. Uh, definitely the songs are, are uh, you know, they're, they're rock and roll, heavy rock and roll, just like uh, Avery Knapp in the past. Uh, but there'll be some slow stuff on there too that, that people can, uh, trying, to, trying to go all over. I always try and go all over. I don't like to do just completely one thing, but, but certainly this album is, uh, is uh, it's high energy, it, it, it's rock and roll, and uh, you're just gonna, you know, turn it up loud and have a good time. Yeah, the drums, uh, what everybody calls the bed tracks, right? You gotta start with the heartbeat of the song, it's always the drums, and, uh, 
and then you layer everything over top of that. But that is the heartbeat of the song. Uh, always have a good drummer or you're never going to be able to do anything. My guess is that this is the key. Oh, it's open. The uh, Metalworks booth. Don't mind me. There's Chris setting up the drums for one more time. That's Crazy right, take one nice. last drag. Make sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna finish this off. Yeah, the kid, uh, the kid says he's up for it. As he was pacing nervously back and forth. Yeah, he's wondering where the hell I am. Late as usual. Oh no, we were talking about it. He said, I don't need Dan. Just set up the drums. He has no part in that. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. No, you don't. I know. Yeah. I'm talking <laughs> uh, third person, you know. <laughs> so, you know, Dan. I got to get into the Avery Knapp mood. Uh, I'm just, uh, what I am today is the rhythm guitar player. I'm here for the kid. Just laying down some tracks with them. I'm not even going to be, nothing I do today is going to be of any significance at all other than the fact to uh, make the kid feel comfortable and can hear the changes in the parts and that, but uh, my stuff's not going to be recorded. That's That won't be till the new year, 2006, starting in January. And uh, so we're just going to lay it down with the kid today. And and uh, Morris and I have uh, full faith in him that he's going to pull this stuff off. And uh, well, we'd like it to be by tomorrow after, you know, tomorrow night at nine o'clock, but uh, we'll see how things go. Parts on it, right? But Okay. Like I said, if we're just not, as a guy, kind yeah, of. it's just it's just sure. for him to do his parts, right? Sure. Yeah, that, that'll kind of keep you out here in the room too. Yeah. So I like to yeah be with him. Uh, sure. Yeah. And do you guys want to play the click? Well, we were thinking about maybe uh, starting it that way, but uh, he doesn't like to play through the whole thing, right? Is that right, kid? Yeah. Right. Maybe start with it, like just we'll to kind of get a reference. Yeah, we'll start. just kind of go through it a little bit, maybe set the click or whatever, and then and start it. The up. kid yeah. relaxing. <laughs> Well, while I have you here, kid, let me just ask you a couple of quick questions. Uh, married kids, what's happened to you since Avery Nap? Um, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> what are you doing for a living? Uh, no, I just work at a, a kid's camp and, you know. Alright, well, you're going to be beating the drums in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. almost uh, he's still working on his drum check so I'm just waiting out of the way you know and then we see you again uh, back here uh, in the second week of January yeah when well, I'll, I'll be starting to lay down stuff then myself well I probably yeah no well, I don't care if you want to what do you mean no I got that <laughs> yeah. well the kid shocks everybody and did all 12 of his tracks in one day so it turns out we had an extra day on our hands and Dan told me that we could probably start the bass guitar tracks tomorrow. And again, just like uh, the drums, uh, the bass has to be the heartbeat of the song. So you must react as the bass player to the heartbeat of the song. But I did it. I'm no mechanic, but I got it going. Got it power. <laughs> it's gonna be powering your vibe. Right? Okay, yeah, that's useful. Yeah. Remember that firewire is mine. It doesn't have any Apple Watch stuff on it. Yeah. Park this right at the front at Metalworks. And 
uh, see what's going on here. Okay, we're here at Metalworks. So I just caught a, got a call from Dan about half an hour ago at 5.30. He was supposed to be in studio till 9. Uh, he's got a problem with his guitars. Uh, <clears throat> his voice was a little uh, nervous there. I guess there's a block or something going on. So we're going to go in there and check out, uh, see what's going on, and uh, take it from there. Okay. No, that comes oh, you're going to meet the old film. I'm all depressed. Buddy, that's prime time for me. <laughs> that's even more. That, that, that's worth more money than the uh, 85 bucks an hour at uh, at Metalworks, right? Trust me. Well, what you know, this day was too much. I woke up and my and the car didn't start. Yeah. So I had to play around with that and get that going. So I got here late, and then we finally set up. Everything's rolling along fairly decently. I mean, we had to play with the tunings, and yeah. then finally it just got so bad that I couldn't continue anymore. So we got four songs done, and that's it. Okay, we'll see how much Dan can cram in there, and then it's uh, my turn. See, this isn't working out for me, man. Yeah, yeah but what specifically uh, but the kid, happened? Well, what happened is, is the kid got booked for the uh, Saturday and Sunday. And I was fully convinced uh, of, of the kid's ability, and I knew he'd be able to pull it off, I thought, in the two days. I didn't know he, he would be so good that he'd nail all 12 tracks in one day. Uh... It blew me away. It blew Morris away. Yeah, I didn't blew believe it. It. It, One I mean, <laughs> it's unheard of. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, after the ten-hour session with the kid, after he nails it, he, uh, he, uh, you know, I went home and I'm panicking now because uh, I got eight guitars that I got to restring, and it's, you know, when we left here, it was ten o'clock at night, and uh, it was rough. Uh, I ended up staying up till, uh, I don't know about two in the morning well when I re <laughs> when I restrung my guitars I was tired after doing a 10 hour shift and I had to drive from uh, one part of the city to the other and then by the time I got home it was 11 o'clock and then I uh, started restringing guitars and and you know next thing you know it's two o'clock eight guitars later and I just did everything wrong I just forgot everything uh, it just hadn't done it in in that uh, quick of a fashion in in a long period of time but also, too, like I said, about being prepared. You know, I, w I wasn't prepared. The next session I went in, I thought, okay, I had a, I had a goal of mine, and I said, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Uh, but, but I also went, okay, fine. But what if I do this? What if everything goes great, and I do exactly what I want to do? What if there's five hours left? What am I going to do? Right? So I, 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 I've continuously went on that premise ever since then. You can say, basically, that... Uh... That one day, even though it was a wash in terms of uh, the actual performance, it was valuable in, in, in bringing you back up to speed in terms of uh, being prepared uh, for each uh, section, no matter how fast you do it, and, uh, and uh, you know, shocking you back into, uh, into reality. Uh, uh, yeah, Absolutely. or a higher level of performance. If you That's want. right, yeah, yeah, bringing me back up to the level where you need to be, yeah, yeah, for sure. Off right here, listen. Right here. Yeah. Over here. Watch. That's fine. It's there. What am I doing wrong? I had this. It's gonna be something stupid too. It's gonna be like. It's gonna be easier than what I'm doing. That's what it's gonna be. So how'd it go today? It was great. Uh, right on schedule. Uh, plan to finish off the bass lines today, which happened, and 
and we got to do in uh, do the fills for the rest of the guitar work too. So now we just move on to vocals and uh, and uh, the lead guitar solos and stuff like that for the next couple of sessions. So we're we're we did exactly what we set out to do. So and that's always good. The guitar is the last of the bad tracks. Whether you use guitar or piano, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's the last of it, and the bad tracks are done. So you want to try this one? It's Dan? So yeah, as I was talking about earlier about flavoring the tracks and that, uh, I was doing all the guitars and everything and we just needed a little bit of different flavor. So we asked a buddy of ours called Des Leahy, he came in, great, a great guitar player in Toronto, and a buddy of ours, and he came in and he did the tracks, it was all fun and, and that's it, it just added more flavor, an extra layer. Uh, my name is Des Leahy, 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 however you want to pronounce it, people pronounce it differently. Um, I'm going through the questions in order. What was the next one? Oh, where do you hail from? And uh, I was born in England, born in, in London, jolly old. Um, 
Come over here. It was about ten. Yep, I picked up the accent. And I was a uh, poor. I was a poor child. Um, three parents. Um, how long have we been playing guitar? Yes. Yeah. Jesus, fourteen years old. So uh, thirty, thirty years, going on thirty years. Yes. And where is your career as a guitarist taken you over those 30 years? Um, uh, geographically, physically, uh, spiritually, emotionally. Oh, any way you want to look at it. Everywhere. All over the place. Um, you know, here and there. Throughout the States, anyway, playing. Lots of places in Canada. Just having yep. a sip of tea here. Yeah, okay, so you're here to help out uh, Dan Strudwick and his uh, absolutely My Life album? And yep. Help the project out. I like what I hear so far. He's what a, songs did he have rocker. you uh, playing? I have to go to the list. <laughs> he's got up. a list. I wrote them down. I was just the ones I'm supposed to be playing on. So it's about half a dozen of them. Something like that. Okay, well, we'll let, we'll let you get to it, and we'll see how Absolutely. it turns out. Beautiful. Cheers. Playing with the toys. Okay, go for it. Yeah, the kid's playing with the toys. Let's see if I can do this. It's been a long time. Yeah, but sewers. And he also got the cue ball. Yeah, 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 that is a cool shot. Okay, let's get you guys in on one shot. Okay, here okay, we go. Yeah, sit out, sit out beside him here. We got Dev, we got Dan, we got the kid, Chris Denoy. Yep, there they are. Yep, days in my life. There you go. <laughs> yeah, the vocals. Uh, the reason that they're done at this time is if you're a vocalist, how are you supposed to sing to anything? You need to be inspired, right? So when you hear the band and the song coming together, you kind of grow with it. And, and then you add to it over top. It's all about, at this point in the recording process, it's all about spices. You know, the, the, the foundation's already been laid down. So the vocals and the lead guitar and, the, and whatever else you want to put over top is just icing on the cake after that. I'm looking for somebody to take me to a place I didn't want to go. I'm looking for somebody to feed me a things I wasn't hungry for. But you came on me like a hurricane. I didn't see the storm in your eye. You showed me things I didn't want to see. You made me stay when I should leave. When you know what I want, no one needs. That's a reason to find me here. Well, I got to find Okay, Dan, you've just finished a nice long session. Uh, how do you feel about what happened today? No, it was fine. Uh, I came down, 
drank some tea and that cut the smoking down unfortunately I still smoke for you kids out there don't do that at home but uh, but yeah um, no it was great uh, everything everything that uh, I wanted done today got done and uh, and so far it's been that way since day one except for the one day yeah the percussion with the kid um, uh, again like I talked of earlier uh, everything once the bed tracks are done is is accents on top uh, flavor and uh, and just adding a different flavor a different rhythm to the song and the background that has its own unique thing it adds to the song yeah the studio toys where's the cowbell there's one in there somewhere Chris Benoit playing with his toys oh yeah it's a double chorus at the end that's right Okay, uh, with regards to the uh, percussion work, uh, we, we saw you using all kinds of different uh, uh, instruments to get the different sounds you wanted for uh, all of the um, songs in that album. Uh, we never really do see people doing that uh, as part of an album. I, uh, it's the first time I've ever seen a person doing a, a accent uh, a material for an album. Uh, how do you prepare for that or do you even practice for that or do you just play it by ear? Uh, I sort of just played it by ear. I, I, I went over a few things at home, and, uh, but uh, I don't generally play the tambourine or, or uh, a lot of per a lot of hand percussion. So it was something I just just did as uh, you know, sort of a lot of it just on the spot and you know by ear sort of thing. So. So folks, at, at the end of all this process, then you go to the mix down. You know, that's about taking all of these tracks that you've done. And, and making them a cohesive song and making them sound good together because they're all separate entities and bringing them all together and mixing them together is what it's all about. Okay, we're on our way to Metalworks uh, to check up on Dan Strudwick and uh, his album Days of My Life. They're in the mix down stage. Uh, they had a couple of problems with uh, guitar work uh, early on, but I think they've corrected that on the new stuff, and they're going to go back now and correct it, and uh, that should be about it. Uh, a whole whack of money, four months, it's coming down to this, uh, where we see uh, what happens to Dan, his dream, and uh, whether the public's going to uh, go for his brand of music. So um, it should be interesting. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Here we go. Okay. Turning in here. Let's go, man. But no, I think we did okay yesterday. Uh, we did a little better. We focused in on, uh, you know, what we kind of messed up on. Maybe the... right. So, Dan, so yes. ends the uh, formal recording sessions of Days in My Life. You got it. What happens okay. now? We go to the mix down Saturday, Sunday. And what exactly is that for the fans out there that aren't uh, hip to this? We're gonna make it. We're gonna try and wrap up this present with a nice big bow on it, so you guys like it. Make it all sound good. Make all the levels nice, so it sounds really nice for you kitties out there in rock and roll land. But there's still notes that drop out, and the only way to bring those notes up is to bring the volume up, and then then you'd have the other stuff too loud. That's it. It's the actual tone that he he's using. So yeah, like stuff it, drops. He's got the wah going in there. I right? think it's a wah that he's using. Yeah. yeah. He still must be able to turn a few knobs though, right? <laughs> 
Oh, it's always <laughs> more dogs. You know what I mean? Just less something. I don't know what it is. Like treble or something. mid or something. You know what I mean? Just a... Well, there, it's definitely it, it? it's definitely trebly. It's it's just it's very like it's very like this. You know what I mean? Instead of like cool. Good. I actually liked it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got the disc, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna call you tomorrow. So, yeah, and let me know. Yeah, let us know. Let, let so you know, yeah. and uh, it shouldn't be a problem. But you know, yep. I'd rather double check. You know what I mean? You got it, man. And, uh, if there's a problem, well, you'll know about it. You got it. <laughs> Okay, see ya. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, right yeah, away. I will. Okay, see you guys. Yeah. Okay, Dan, you're done. Let's rock and roll. I'm ready. Okay, Dan, so uh, what were the high moments? The high moments, many. Um, getting to work with the kid again. Hadn't seen him in a long time. Um, getting to work with Des. Des was uh, very professional. Came in, did a great job for us. Um, just getting the opportunity to, to make music again. Uh, was was uh, uh, tremendously inspiring. It led me to places such as New Orleans, where I got to write a song about it and and and, and get ensconced in that um, culture and music and just an amazing place. Um, just so many great things. Uh, um, I, I'm proud of what we did, and um, I think it's a good it's a good record for those for those who like that genre of music. I think we, uh, I think we, um, I think we laid down some pretty cool tracks for them. Okay, and what were the low moments, which well, is always interesting. Uh, <laughs> well, the low moments, uh, a couple of things pop into my head, but obviously the number one is the guitar fiasco uh, that we that was talked about before with the um, restringing of the guitars and all that stuff. Because I was a little tired after the session and uh, that 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 fiasco, and then. Um, Oh, I think I cut my hand uh, the one time when we were loading the uh, the amplifiers into the big room. Oh, yeah. When we were doing the thing at the, out of the back of the car, and that, that hurt a little bit. Morris had to edit that one, uh, so because <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was um, a few uh, expletives flying. The next step of the recording process is the mastering. Good. Hey. Hey, how's it going? What are you doing, man? There's Andy. So we're here at Silverbird Productions here in Toronto. What can't we do with this uh, material? Well, the first thing to understand is a uh, mastering engineer is a uh, very uh, kind of unknown and esoteric job. And basically our responsibilities are to take the studio mixes or whatever combination of tracks people have done that they've turned into stereo. Our job is to try and uh, make a sequence or an album out of it. So we want to, um, well, I want you to be able to sit in your chair and listen to track one through track nine and not have to get out of your chair to adjust your stereo for any reason whatsoever, whether it be volume or too much bass or too much brightness. In other words, if you don't want to get to track six and be uncomfortable because the bottom end is way too uh, heavy for that song, so my job is basically to take the mixes that were done and try and balance them out and uh, get them to the commercial volume level of the average CD today. Uh, just offhand, uh, just how much of an improvement can you really make with this stuff uh, in the end? Um, actually, sometimes quite a bit. It just really depends on the material. Mm -hmm. Like some, some, if the material is... When you listen to a major label release that's been recorded, mixed, and mastered professionally, you have a full range of sound. Everything's, you know, say a rap song, it sounds full range. Um, of course, there are some rap sounds that don't, rap songs that don't sound full range, but usually that's calculated. They want them to sound street or tinny or small. But the average one sounds, you know, like a 50 cent album sounds big, fat, full, whatever characteristics you want to give it. So mm. we're trying to. Uh, figure out what frequencies are available. I keep looking at my screen to show you. We try and figure out what frequencies we can uh, pull up to make it sound richer and what ones we can pull down to make it sound less shrill. And uh, all this gear helps us do that. So I, I think it'll, um, I mean, it'll sound, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's worthwhile trying to play something into a monophonic camera mic, but I could show you a couple of things if you're interested. Go ahead. 
for instance, um, I decided when I master, I decide to pull up what's considered to be sort of standard material uh, for the kind of music I'm working in. Mm -hmm. So in order to get a reference, in other words, for me, every day fresh to hear what's, set, what's considered to be good, I pull up a couple of major label CDs. Mm -hmm. So here's what I do. This is in the air. Just one chase will take you there. Uh, this is John Legend, a little bit of John Legend, and then I play a little bit of Glenn Lewis, I think he's a Canadian guy. <laughs> These are tracks I've recorded into my hard drive, they're exactly the same resolution as the CD. And then I work away on Shane's material, going back and forth, and I've come up with uh, this. Sick of living life, every day is a struggle. E pills, K vibes, and half pounds of hustle. Keep my style on, the smarts and no muscle. Make that paper. This is in the air. Just one chase will take you there. That is all the same. I never seen that love beat me. Right. Now, what I had before was this. If, uh, if the camera, if the camera microphone actually can ca catch the nuances, but this is what we had before. It's a little lower in volume level, not quite as bright and rich. And then the master that I created for this is as such. So I don't know if you can hear the difference. Well, I can take it. It sounds better. Yeah, it sounds better. So that's what we're doing. And of course, it's never going to sound as good as the uh, the ones that I played earlier, because they're probably anywhere from hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand dollar productions. We don't so, have that at Fortress of Freedom. I can tell you that. <laughs> Fortress of Freedom is doing the best they can. You got it. Because our the mastering suite that we run here is uh, is very much equivalent to the mastering suites where these other albums were mastered. So at least at least Fortress of Freedom has not skimped on the mastering process, and I'll give them full credit for that. Okay, well, Andy, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. My thanks pleasure. For being here. All right. The next day is the actual production of the CD. We're here with uh, Bruce Longman. He's going to take us step by step through uh, what he does to get uh, so our files ready for manufacturing. And uh, so, Bruce, uh, just take us step by step with uh, what you would do with an artist who sends you uh, 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 his ideas for, uh, for his covers and uh, how you prepare them and, and what you do to get this actually ready to manufacture with the, uh, with the printer. Uh, well, it depends on how the files come in. Uh, you know, if somebody sends me a Photoshop file, I'll go through the original Photoshop file, layered file, and, and make sure that the fonts are all okay, uh, you know, that the dimensions are fine. Uh, I'll then save it in a specific way so that I can import it into my templates in Quark Express, which is the layout software that I use. I've dropped the files into my templates that I use for the layout. Uh, so I'm sort of at the, f the final stages. I'm adding, you know, UPC code. Can you add that right now? To the back of the, uh, yeah, just pop it in. Wherever I saved it, I saved it somewhere. Probably in the Avery Nap folder. There it is. If so I just import your barcode in, there you go. And position it wherever we, we want it. And let's see where we want to put it. There you go. Barcode it. On our uh, tray card. Okay, what we have here are the finished files for Avery Nap. Right, these two right here. All right, I'm actually going to have you pick one there out there. There we go, I'm going <laughs> to put one into the cookie jar. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Damn, look at that Avery. Yeah, let me zoom in on that. Yeah, Avery Nap days of my life. There, there it is. Go. First uh, production copy. The last stage is marketing and promoting.
We're here with Dan Strodick. He's gonna check out uh, what the CDs and the record stores are doing. Going to the record store. Yeah, we're gonna go to the record store. Sam, the record man. Yeah, you there? Hey, uh, hang on, focus. Ah, uh, nine ninety eight. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, look at that. Let's take a look at it. What, you want it right here? Yeah, right here. Let's try pop up. Right on Young Street. Freshly bought from Sam the Record Man. Yeah. And that's it. Our CD is manufactured and in the stores. Now I'd like to show you a video clip from the album Avery Knapp, Days of My Life. The song is called Nolens. I hope you enjoy.
want to say to the folks? Well, I'd like to say thanks to FOF for giving me the opportunity, number one, um, and uh, giving me the opportunity to make some music again. Like I said, getting me excited uh, and um, just leading me to places that I wouldn't have went to if, if the opportunity hadn't arisen. What are you going to do with that? Where do you want to go? I mean, you're a free man now. What, what's, what's up with you? A free man is, good, is a good uh, place to be. Everybody wants that. Uh, but absolutely, if uh, if people like what we're doing, we will continue doing it. Uh, I'm going to do it anyways, whether people like it or not. I hope that I write things and perform for people where they do like it and they do hop on board, and I entertain them and, and bring them through different moods. And and uh, hey, I like to write a song that people get married to and. and and dance and have a good time too and that's that's what it's that's what music's about to me what is Avery Knapp? Avery Knapp a rock band that just wanted to entertain the the, the hard-working men and women out there come and see our shows and we felt good they felt good that's all it was about